The, the big hashtag this week that I saw was uh, the whole like defund the police thing, mm-hmm. which uh, I'll be honest, when I first saw that, my immediate like visceral reaction was like, oh my God, are you fucking kidding me? We're talking about like getting rid of the, the police. You know what I mean? Like I was like, I, you're trying to tell me you want to get rid of the people that have quotas for arrests, <laughs> Well, that, <laughs> not that, even see, for doing just justice, but for... Uh, if you want to make your money this month, you got to give out a couple speeding tickets and traffic stops. And <laughs> well, yeah, that I, I, and I will say what really kind of like opened my eyes to it a lot was uh, because my like I said, my initial reaction. There's just like, a right, business too, dude. There's exactly. a business yes. that are the the law. Mm-hmm. I guess I was kind of looking for like because like I, my I feel like my opinion has shifted a lot just in this past day. I watch like one of my, I'll get to it, but my initial thought was like, okay, so we're talking about not having, or like what, 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 like it's one thing to say defund the police, but it's a whole other thing to say, what are we going to have instead? Unless. Well, what people are talking about is having the community police their own community, which is like what happened with the police originally until. Mm -hmm like shit got weird and then also like i don't know like at at some point the police got militarized to the point where like when when we send our army somewhere else to fight the enemy they don't have any attachment to that place they don't know those people so then they can treat them as if they aren't people the police do that right now Mm -hmm. how many police officers actually live in the neighborhoods they police yeah, that's a good They're question. essentially going into war zones every day thinking that the citizens are their enemies and they can show force. They can mm-hmm. do whatever the fuck they want to these people because they don't know these people. They don't care about these people. They aren't their mm-hmm. neighbor. Yeah. They don't have to fucking see them every morning when they get their paper. They mm-hmm. don't have, you know, like it's, it's just fucked up. Like it's fucked up that it's gotten to this point that like we need to actually reform the police. Yeah, well... And I, dude, I, like, I, I watched, um... But I mean, dude, it needs to be done. We, yeah, I was watching, um, I think I've mentioned him before on the podcast, a uh, guy named, I think he goes by Tyler Bluntman. He's a friend of mine from, from back in the, from way back when I was working at Seasons. He used to work at the Anytime Fitness next door, and he would always come in on his lunch break. He's about our age, um, and he runs this show... I think it's still called Terrible Conservative. He's like a libertarian, black guy, he's a real good friend of mine. I think he go, I think he goes by Tyler Nobody, Tyler Bluntman now. He's been like Joe Nobody, and I, maybe it's still Terrible Conservative, or maybe it's like forty minute debates now. I don't know exactly what he's doing, but he he's like a very like libertarian guy, and he had this video that I shared in my personal um, Instagram story that like really kind of like changed the way I was looking at it because he took this kind of like libertarian approach to the idea of of should we have government police where instead of having a a, a publicly funded like a, a government run institution if communities were able to basically contract their police forces and run them on like for, I mean the, the exact specific example that he used was like if you were able to have a community that could hire a private police force or hire people within their community to police it and and contract them that way and then like after four years you're able to look and be like hey are you are you policing our community the way that we think you should be do you, how's your relationship with the community these this that the other thing and then you're actually able to hold your police force accountable and when i saw that i was like that's a very interesting take it's also a very um interestingly enough a very right-wing libertarian solution to that problem you know because this is a guy it's like it's weird because i remember like back in the day when i was like first and there's a lot of libertarian positions that i like sympathize with but there's also a lot of the libertarian positions that like they get into like the bare basics of like public life where they're like we should have privately funded roads and privately funded this and privately funded that. It's like, all right, can we re- privately funded military? It's like, all right, can, is that really possible? Can you do that? You know, but like even like the police force, for instance, I remember looking at that back in the day. I was like, okay, the police force is probably something that uh, should be government run. 
You know what I mean? But then you start looking at it now and you're like, but the government run police force isn't serving the community. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's weird. It's weird how, and this is why I have such an issue with the polarization of the left, right, the conservative, liberal, Democrat, Republican split that we have is because on any given issue, we are able to talk sensibly through to a reasonable solution. It is only when you start to label certain ideologies as associated with this political affiliation or that political affiliation that it starts to distort the conversation. Because it, all of a sudden, you're talking about something that is very, like you're talking about eliminating an institution that is government controlled and bringing it back to privately funded communities to make their own decisions. And, and it's being talked about in various left wing circles. And yeah. that to me is a good thing because also, it's- also, it is, it is like a leftist type of, you know, plan too. In which way? I mean, it's a leftist plan in that in that there that like you see the whole defund the police thing being brought up in leftist circles, and the problem is, and I fell victim to this myself, admittedly, is because it was those circles that were bringing it up. I automatically assumed that they were thinking this, that, the other thing. But then when I took a look at it from my sensibilities and was like, "Oh, I see what they're talking about," but also it's it's like. You're talk. It's like it's an. Basically, what I'm getting at is it's an idea that that if you can look at any individual like issue that we're dealing with and bypass the whole, you're right wing, you think like this. You're left wing, you think like this. And we can just observe. Look, you have an institution in Baltimore City that is simply not able to do their job, and that's why we have. We had there was a big debate, I think, probably around this time last year, where Johns Hopkins wanted to get their own private police force and people shot it down because it got taken into a political universe where all yeah. of a sudden, if you were but that's on also that's that's the the weird thing with that though is Johns Hopkins, if they had the police force, it would be in their interest and not the community's. You could, you could, you could certainly say that, and I would agree with you to a point. But I would also say that right now the public police force isn't in the interest of the communities either. Yeah, and that's why on both sides of political parties, everyone seems to kind of think that mm -hmm. <laughs> like this, we need to do something about this. Yeah, and um, it's kind of it's weird because like I think about this debate translated into other issues this idea of you have a government-run institution that is not serving the interests of the people that it serves we have that problem in our city with the education system as well our education system does not serve the people of baltimore city it does not for some reason we take the opposite approach we go we all acknowledge that this system is completely corrupt that you pump millions and millions and millions of dollars into this system, but yet you're still never able to see, still to this day, water running in public schools, people able to, I mean, we, our literacy rate, all these things that are happening because our institutions are failing. We look at the police and we say, this is a failing institution. It is not serving the interests of our community. It's Let's time buy for them the some tanks and tactical gear. Ex to use Dude. on civilians. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's kind of like, it's like you look at that and you're like, okay, so if I were to take the people who look at that problem with education in our city and say that we all acknowledge that this bureaucracy of people that are in charge of our education in Baltimore City, you know, we have millions and millions of dollars that go to the city that they audit them and they can't account for like, what, what was it, like $80 million in the past like three years they were just like oh we don't know what happened to it dude and you're like blah blah blah. you have yeah we spent it all on books i think <laughs> i think i think and so that's always been a, a thing for me because it's like i my ultimate goal what i would like to see is public schools where you can actually send your kid to that school and feel as if he's getting a quality education in a quality environment you know we were lucky enough to have that in towson high school if you live in baltimore city uh, and you have the money to not send your kids to public school, 
You're not sending your kids to public school. If you live in Roland Park, you're sending your kid to Gilman, Bryn Mawr, fucking, you know, Loyola, Calvert Hall, Boys Latin, one of those schools. Any kid, any kid that's affluent in Baltimore City would not step foot in a public school there, and that's a fucking problem. That's a fucking problem because our institutions in that city are failing, and for whatever reason, you keep on running across this conundrum, which is, well, if you disagree that we should increase spending and increase funding and this is the other thing, then you must not care about the education system. To me, that's the same thing as saying if you disagree that the police – are not doing their jobs correctly, that they are corrupt and, and not serving the community, then you should be saying that we need to fund the police more. And of course, nobody would ever say that. Nobody would. Nobody is saying that. Everyone is saying, no, dude, the problem is that this institution itself is shitty and there's no amount of money you are ever going to pump into it that's going to make it work. All it's going to do is fund the people that are using it for their own gain. And that's what I see happening in the educational institution. And Again, I just wish that we could bypass all the other political divisions that are occurring here, all the other things, and just get to the crux of the matter. Yeah. I mean, we're essentially just living in the Stanford prison experiment. Mm-hmm. And I see, I see politicians that – and I, I believe this is, uh, this is another thing, again, that is done on both sides. I see – you have you have this incident that happened with George Floyd, and everything falls into place in terms of it's a white cop, it's a black victim, and it happens at this time in our country that is like unprecedented. You have you know you have the lockdown going on, and everybody's already on the edge of their seat for that, and this happens, and it strikes a chord with the racial tension that exists in our community, and you have what I believe an anger that how can I describe this it's a it's a justifiable anger it is a justifiable anger that i think is being misdirected in a way in that you have communities such as if you go to a poor white community in like west virginia or something like that where those people are living in desolate conditions. Their jobs have all gone away. They're all addicted to fucking opioids and shit like that. But they're voting Republican over and over and over again because they are told that even though they're living in these desolate conditions, that the real problem is Mexicans coming over the border and Muslims, Democrats. yeah, Democrats and Muslims doing this and this, that, the other thing. And so you have these political parties in those areas that are uncontested. They are uncontested because they have told you that as desolate as your conditions are, they're not the problem. Just keep voting for us. We're not the problem. It's those people. And so anytime you see an issue in your daily life, anything that happens to you in your daily life, it's not our fault. It's their fault. And I see the same thing happening in these inner city communities, which is you have undeniably that these, that, that these cities are disproportionately minority and, and disproportionately be, they're living in these communities where they have an, uh, uh, you know, an expanded presence of police and they're being told, in my opinion, by, but you're being told by their all Democrat Congress. I mean, all the city council in Baltimore is, is Democrat. The mayor, everyone in there is supposedly on your side. And that city has been, I'm talking, I'm speaking specifically to, to our city because it's the closest to home. I'm sure this goes on in every other city across the country. Yeah. You have these people that are in power. Like I said, the same thing that goes on in rural areas with the Republicans and they tell them this, that, the other, this is the enemy, that's the enemy. You have these people that have allowed this city and its institutions, its police force, its education system, everything about it to deteriorate. Our city has drop, is dropping 10,000 in population every fucking year. We're not even barely, a, we're barely in the, uh, the top 30 major cities anymore because everyone's fucking leaving Baltimore because it's been allowed to deteriorate to that point. You have Flint, Michigan, who is all, again, an all-Democrat 
area and things like that, and they haven't had clean drinking water for six years, and the blame is always someone else. It's always someone, oh, we're not getting enough of this, we're not getting enough of that. It's all about deflection. When you live in an area where there is, where the government does not have, there is no incentive for the government in a city like Baltimore to ever serve its people. There's no incentive because there's no one on the other side that can say, hey, if you fucking run this shit into the ground for 30 years, you're going to get voted out. They're never going to get voted out. Ever. Ever. And so instead of accepting responsibility, I see these, the, the mayor of LA or something like that, or the, the, mayor of Minia- the mayor of Minneapolis on TV, going on there and saying, being black should never be a death sentence in this country, this, that, the other thing. And I'm just sitting there and I'm thinking, dude, you're the fucking mayor of this city. You're the one in charge. You're the one in charge of the police force. Mayor Garcetti in LA, the guy kneeling down in front of the police, you're the mayor. But they take this stance where if they kneel down in symbolic, you know, uh, sympathy for this external enemy, that they get to deflect the fact that it's your fault. What no mayor in any of these cities where this shit happens, what no mayor has ever done that I've seen is get on the fucking stage and say, dude, this is my fault. Me and my people that work in our offices that have been running this city for 45 fucking years have allowed this shit to happen. This is my fault. Because then they'd have to accept their own fucking responsibility for what they did. Instead, they want to kneel down in symbolic, you know, solidarity with some external enemy. And that external enemy has divided us as a country, making people believe in this area that their enemy is, you know, white racism and things like that and making the white people in those areas believe the enemy is these people and that people when in reality if we could all just sit down and have a real fucking conversation about what makes the most sense for here and now we could reach a solution and that's what bugs me they're the fucking problem and they're dividing us i think the the tide is turning a little bit though I saw I saw a video. I think it might have even been in Minneapolis at like a protest where it was like a video of the mayor showing up to the protest and he was in the crowd and he was like trying to speak on the mic and the person who was like emceeing it was like asking him questions like so like you know what are your actions on you know solving this problem defunding the police force whatever like can we have you commit to defunding the police force and he was like I can't do that I can't do that and then the MC was like, oh, so um, just I just want to let the crowd know um, he's up for re-election next year, and it kind of seems like he's just here to for PR. So mm-hmm. I want you all to remember that during the polls next year. <laughs> <laughs> that is where, uh, and, and this is what I truly believe. And I then tr- everyone starts, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> just what walks I, away. <laughs> that is a good thing. That is a good thing because now you're holding our political class accountable for what they've done, for what they're doing. And the reason why I've never gotten behind the whole idea of like a revolution or anything like that is that at its fundamentals, I think the concept of America is a beautiful concept. I think the idea of individual freedom and the right to liberty and pursuit of happiness is a beautiful thing. Now, you could say that, yes, at the time when that constitution was drafted, that that, those rights and those freedoms were only granted to white, wealthy, land-owning men. That's true. It's true. But over the course of time, the history of America has been about taking the beautiful concept that we had as a country, that we built this country upon because we rose out of tyranny. We rose out of people suppressing our rights. It has been about taking those same principles and extending them to as many people as possible. So in the 20s, All of a sudden now, it doesn't just apply to wealthy, white-owning men. It applies to women as well. And in the 60s, you extend it even further so that now it includes black people and and other, you know, minorities and things like that who fought for years in World War II, for instance, for freedoms that they didn't have, you know? Mm -hmm. But they fought because they believed in the idea of America. I believe in the idea of America. So I don't agree with this whole concept that we need to overthrow our systems. We need to overthrow this, that, the other thing. What I believe is we need to take these people who are a literal virus within our system to understand that Democrats and Republicans are not the government. They are people who want a seat in the government. 
They don't run you. The government. We don't serve the government. They serve us. And the second you don't serve us, you're the fuck out of here. I don't care what letter is next to your name. And so if it turns out that in a city like Minneapolis or in a city like Baltimore, that the government in place is not doing their job, you're the fuck out of there, bro. We'll get our own communities. We'll do our own fucking thing. We'll start, and this is another thing that, uh, going back to the education thing, the idea of why I never was against the idea of charter schools is because it took the same concept. It took the same concept. It said, dude, I don't want to send my kid to Mervo because that school fucking sucks. Unfortunately, it sucks. I don't want to send my kid there, but I have to because you determine where my kid goes to school. I want to determine where my kid goes to school. If you're not giving my child an education, I want the choice to be able to say, well, I'm not fucking sending them there. I'd rather send them over here. Now, that's a whole different debate, and that's a whole different can of worms, but I'm just saying it kind of, to me, follows that same line of thinking, that people need to take their power back, and it doesn't happen by necessarily a revolution of sorts. It happens by people understanding that we're the ones in control. And the only reason that they remain in control is because we keep allowing them to be. And it doesn't have to be this violent insurrection or anything like that. It just has to be with an understanding that, yeah, we can do this. We can do this. So start holding people accountable.